Right, g'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for round two. After a semi-successful round one, uh, a couple of results didn't go my way. I ended up getting five out of nine correct tips. The Sunday games in particular did go uh, quite well with St Kilda getting over the top against Fremantle and uh, Essendon getting Hawthorne done by about 10 goals in the end, uh, which I really should have seen coming, but nonetheless, uh, got those two wrong. I also tipped West Coast incorrectly and I had tipped the Cats to beat the Pies. So those were the four I got wrong. Um, but overall, uh, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. So five out of nine is what I got. As is tradition on Just the Tips, we will shout out all the weekly winners uh, from the first round of competitions, in particular the footy tipping comp that we have for True Footy and the AFL Fantasy comp we've got as well. So the winner this round was someone called Guy Will Win with eight correct tips, and he had the best margin of just nine, uh, which means that nobody got a perfect nine this round. Uh, it's pretty hard to do that in round one. There's always a couple of... Um, Question mark games, although this one, not nothing too shocking, but clearly wasn't a really easy round to pick because no one got the perfect nine. But well done, Guy will win. And in terms of AFL Fantasy, one of our very own True Footy members, Daniel Busher, is not only leading the True Footy competition, he's ranked 22nd nationally. I believe he's also ranked number one in the Reddit AFL League as well. He's absolutely killing it. Well done, Bush. I think he got like 22-31, uh, which is phenomenal going in it. Really made me feel inadequate. I think it got like 19-26 this week. It was not a great week on the track from the uh, Western Stank Lords in the AFL Fantasy Comp. But either way, um, it's great to have you all involved, and it's a lot of fun already. In today's video, of course, I'm here to give you my tips for the round two set of games. Uh, but before we do that, I will shout out the sponsors of this video, which is, of course, manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs be it the body hair trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0, or their accessories that they provide. They have, you know, ball deodorants, ball moisturizers. They have uh, another roll-on deodorant as well for your actual, you know, your armpits. They have a ball toner. They have a crop reviver as well to make sure everything's smelling nice down there. You can even get yourself, uh, you know, some Manscaped cologne and even some Manscaped boxes. There's a variety of things that you can purchase. And if you do so, you get 20% off with True Footy by using the code TRUEFOOTY20. So get yourself a bargain. Great deals, great products. You'd also be supporting the channel. So thank you. All right, let's crack into round two's tipping. Uh, and this one is comparatively, I actually think... There's a couple of real doozies here, but I'm feeling confident this week, which means absolutely nothing. Uh, as you can see, we're using Squiggle again, and um, it's got an interesting ladder after round one, as it always is, so we won't take too much notice of that. Although I will note that West Coast is higher than Fremantle, and I think this could be the last week it stays that way. But let's just bask in that. Let's just soak that in for the one round it's going to happen. But anyway, let's crack in the first game of the round on Thursday, which is a game that I'm hopeful I can stream, by the way. So make sure you take part in that on Thursday evening slash afternoon in Perth. Uh, Carlton are taking on the Cats at the MCG. Two sides here that uh, I predicted would finish first and fourth, uh, but both sides were not amazing in round one. Carlton had a draw against Richmond, a game we streamed last week. And uh, it wasn't the best spectacle, but again, it's only round one, but it wasn't the best demonstration of uh, what they're capable of achieving. And equally, the Cats didn't look terrible, but they lost to the Pies as well. Um, the Blues, I tipped to come fourth in this year's ladder prediction, although I'm feeling a little bit shaky about that um, just because I just wasn't that impressed. But again, I've got to remind myself, it's only round one. I don't think I see them beating the Cats, to be honest. Um, and if, I, if they are to come fourth... This is probably the sort of game they need to win. Uh, but I can't base my tipping based on my ladder prediction. I have to go fresh week to week and make sure I'm tipping who I think will actually win. And I do think the Cats will win. I think they're just looking a little bit stronger. And I expect them to win this game by 26 points. The second game of the round is an interesting one. Uh, this was a big semi-final last year. These sides have met... Um, well, they've been at the pointy end of the ladder for the last few years. Brisbane were disappointing in Adelaide last week, getting their asses handed them to them by a rampaging Port Adelaide football club. And it's a little bit hard to make too much of that. I'm not, not necessarily losing too much confidence in the Lions. But this is a tough game because the Ds looked red hot in round one. They trounced the Western Bulldogs by about nine goals in the end. I think it was something similar to that. Uh, and they look fantastic with Petrarca and Oliver in particular. The Lions are pretty handy at the Gabba, but I feel like the, Do the Ds do have a knack of playing well there. I think they beat them there last year. And of course, the Lions did beat them at the G in the finals as well. So this one's a tricky one. I'm expecting a much improved Brisbane side to come out and play. But I think 
You know, Melbourne are my predicted premier and round one was a really compelling effort. So I think they're going to make the Lions 0-2 here, which is dangerous. I will say it'll be a close game. They'll win by 18 points. This will be a good game, I hope. Whew. The first three games are actually all really potentially good games. You've got Collingwood against Port Adelaide, um, two of the form sides, or, uh, as much as you can say that after round one, but two of the more impressive sides from round one. Collingwood getting the job done over Geelong, kicking the final eight goals of the game, I think it was, to win by 22 points. And the power, as I just mentioned before, uh, handed Brisbane's ass to them in, um, in Adelaide. So... Again, I don't know if I would be confident in Port Adelaide backing that up at the MCG against the side that uh, looked very, very impressive themselves. So I'm going to go with the home ground advantage here, and I'll tip Collingwood to win this, but there is a chance of an upset, but I think it's just the home and away factor here. This was an Adelaide to tip Port. I'm going to tip Collingwood to win in Victoria by 16 points. Adelaide then played Richmond, uh, and both of these sides were a little underwhelming, but not bad, if that makes sense. The Crows went to Sydney last week against a side that typically has the wood over them, over at least over the last couple of years. Adelaide have been rebuilding, though. They played a really good first half. They got 28 points in front, and then they blew it. They got absolutely trounced in the second half to lose by 16 points. So I don't know what to make of that. I'm still I'm bullish about Adelaide. I think they can do good things this year. And their youth is, is exciting. I think despite being a young side, they played with a good system and intensity and I think they're capable of beating some good sides. Uh, Richmond, on the other hand, arguably had the better of Carlton for large periods of the game last week, but of course the game ended in a draw and they were lucky to, to even have that in the end, obviously kicking the goal with 17 seconds to go. Richmond will be a better side than Adelaide. I'm confident of that, at least on strength of best 22. However, I think Adelaide wins this. I think Adelaide, uh, you know, they'll be disappointed with last week's result, as will, as will Richmond. But... The Crows are pretty good in Adelaide with a big home crowd. This will be a big game. And uh, I have memories of Adelaide beating Richmond um, at the Adelaide Oval, which might not mean anything because, you know, both of these teams have been up and down since uh, when these guys were both good in 2017. I'm going to say Adelaide win, though. I'm going to say they win this by 20 points in a bit of a boil over. Then you've got the Bulldogs and St Kilda doing battle at Marvel Stadium. Uh, this could be a potentially good game. Uh, going into this season, I was a lot more confident on the Bulldogs than I was St Kilda. But the Bulldogs got fairly well beaten against the Demons. They went with that uh, tall, f uh, famously tall forward line, four key forwards, uh, who combined for just four goals last week. And they are coming up against, well, they were coming up against arguably the strongest side in the competition, in my opinion. So I won't hold that too much against them. I still think they're a very competitive, very strong-looking outfit. Um, so I have faith in the Bulldogs here. That being said, St Kilda surprised me a little bit by beating Fremantle at Marvel Stadium last week. I mean, they kind of strangled Fremantle's um, avenues to goal. Uh, Fremantle had like 65 inside 50s for just seven goals. Uh, so I don't know if they would be able to do that again to the Bulldogs, who have a little bit more scoring power, admittedly. I don't think they got the structure right last week. But regardless, I think the Bulldogs will be tough to beat, to be honest. And I'm going to say the Bulldogs win this game. I'll be surprised if they don't. But if the Saints do win this, I'll be very impressed with what Ross Lyon has been able to achieve in just two weeks, beating two relatively good sides who played finals last week, last year rather. The Dogs win this by four goals. Then you've got Fremantle and North Melbourne. I did just touch on Fremantle there. Um, again, like I said, they got strangled a little bit against St Kilda and couldn't convert their opportunities, and I think that could be an ongoing problem for them. Um, that being said, you know, for the most part, the fact they were generating supply is a really good sign. Um, and there were some good uh, bright sparks in particular, like Brennan Cox had 20, 20 marks at three-quarter time. That's just stupid. Uh, Luke Ryan was good. Their midfielders were fine. Um, it was just their forward entries, were, they weren't able to convert. I don't think that will necessarily mean that I'm so not confident in them that this is a danger game. But North Melbourne were pretty good last week. Um, and I've done a video on that. You know my thoughts on that. And I think... They will be good enough to, to challenge Fremantle here, like seriously challenge them. And that's more out of respect for North Melbourne than the current little burst of form that they're currently in. I don't know if they'll be able to sustain it for a full year, but against West Coast, they look dangerous in patches. I'll be very surprised if Fremantle drop this, to be honest. And if they do, it'll be a bit dire for them as a side that is looking to propel into the top four, or at least stay in the top six. I think this, it could be a danger game. However, Fremantle should be well and truly strong enough to win this game. So I'll say in the home crowd, Fremantle will get the job done by 30 points, but it is not absolutely straightforward. 
Sydney play Hawthorne then at the SCG, uh, where historically I think the Hawks have bopped up for a few upsets against the Swans here. Um, but the Swans, again, were playing a side that liked to upset them previously in Gold Coast last week and absolutely trounced them. And Hawthorne's form wasn't fantastic uh, last week against Essendon as well. And I think the way their, their side is structured, it's, it's too young, too inexperienced. They're going to have games where they bob up and win unexpectedly. But to lose to Essendon by 10 goals, I'm not going to then tip them to beat Sydney in Sydney, which is exactly the sort of thing Sam Mitchell's Hawks would do. But Sydney are far too strong. They're a good side. They'll get this. Uh, they'll get this win by a good 45 points, I reckon. Then Essendon play the Gold Coast Suns. Essendon uh, again, as we just touched on. That's funny how these games are fixtured. Essendon were far too good for Hawthorne, um, overcoming a fast Hawks start uh, to overcome them and genuinely overpower them. And uh, it was a good midfield performance engineered by Darcy Parish and Zach Merritt was productive as well. And uh, you know, Satterfield came in and was productive as well. I'm liking that word, productive, productive, productive. While I did have my doubts on the strength of Hawthorne this year, I think the fact that Essendon put them to the sword like that uh, probably raises them in my estimations going into this year. It was a very good, solid performance from Brad Scott's men in the opening round of the season. So a good tick for Essendon in the first game. By contrast, Gold Coast were a little bit substandard against the Swans, conceded the first five goals of the game, never really in the contest. I know the Swans are good. So I don't don't know how much to really uh, mark Gold Coast down for that performance, but it wasn't great, and I think they were capable of better. And therefore, on the current form lines at Marvel, where Essendon, I feel like I feel like Essendon have a pretty good record against Gold Coast. I could be could be wrong on that, but I feel like Essendon should win this. They'll go two and zero, and they'll win this game by twenty five points. West Coast versus the GWS. This is a uh, <sighs> it's probably not a tough one, but for me it's tough being an Eagles fan. Uh, obviously quite disappointed with a very poor second quarter fade out against North Melbourne last week, uh, where the shades of 2022 sort of etched back into the game uh, in terms of our performance, but for the other three quarters we were quite solid and we kicked seven of the last nine goals. And I like to think, you know, optimistically that will spur a bit of a response in us next week. And when you look at the fixture the Eagles have over the next six as well, this is probably the last game they could potentially win for a while. So I think there are a chance against the Giants who, to be fair, have done pretty much everything right since uh, the start of the preseason. They they played one game in the preseason. They had a win. They looked impressive. Uh, and then uh, I think it was the Gold Coast Suns they beat, admittedly. We just talked about how they've been lackluster. But to beat the Crows who um, looked pretty good, in the, at least in the first half of that game, and are coming off a good preseason performance. Uh, that's a big tick, to be honest, in terms of validating some of the optimism around them uh, going into this year. And When I look at the comparative midfields, um, obviously Tom Green was monstrous against the Crows, and I think he would be monstrous against us again when you look at how good LDU was against West Coast as well. However, it is worth noting there's a few injury concerns for the Giants going to this game. Whitfield is concussed. Josh Kelly is concussed. Harry Perriman did a hamstring as well. Going into this game, GWS are the better side, to be honest. But I like to tip the Eagles when I shouldn't. Hmm. You know what? Every fibre of my being is saying, tip the Giants. They're the better side. They deserve to be tipped. But I'm going to tip my boys out of pure bias. And at the end of the day, these are my tips. I'm going to get them wrong. All my logic and analysis has pointed to a GWS win. But maybe, maybe, maybe I'll say the Eagles win in front of a home crowd for the last time for a while. They win by 10 points. I actually don't think that's incredibly ridiculous. It is completely tipping with my heart and not my head, though. Eagles by 10. So there you have it, guys. That is my tips for round two. Again, I know that I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot with our Eagles tip. But I'm pretty good at it for the most part. I don't tip us blindly. I'm tipping us blindly this time. It's not a 50-50 game. I would generally tip us in a 50-50 game. This is 40-60 to GWS. But we, <laughs> I just pure hope at this point. If we lose this, we are in serious wooden spoon territory when you consider our fixture. But anyway, that will be the ladder at the end. Of the, uh, of the second round, the Swans are on top of the ladder. Essendon go 2-0, and which is, you know, pretty good start. You know, the, the stats around going 2-0 and and then getting at least close to finals are pretty good. So Sydney, Essendon, Melbourne, Collingwood is your top four. Hawks on the bottom, Gold Coast, and the Brisbane Lions 0-2. So if the Brisbane Lions lose to Melbourne, like I expect they will, they'll be 0-2. They'll be fine, to be honest. 
but it will probably hurt their top four chances. It will be a tight top four based on some of the form we've seen from the competition this uh, this opening fortnight or this opening round. But based on my tips, the opening fortnight. So that's it, guys. Those are my tips. Thank you for taking part. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, um, always appreciate your input. Let me know in the comments what you think of my tips and what your tips are. What's your game of the round as well? I'm going to say Collingwood versus Port is the game of the round. That's the uh, the hottest fixture for me. And Melbourne and Brisbane as well will be another hotly anticipated one. And then, of course, the blockbuster on Sunday night, West Coast versus GWS. But uh, can't wait for it to all unfold, guys. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.